And Senator Chris Murphy of Connecticut, the lead Democratic negotiator in those talks, joins me now. Welcome back to Meet the Press, Senator. Thanks for having me back. Thank you so much for being here. So bring us up to speed. What's the very latest on the negotiations? Where do things stand? So uh, first, I think it's absolutely tragic that Republicans are tying the resolution of maybe the most difficult issue in American politics, immigration, um, to support for Ukraine and Israel. Vladimir Putin is delighting right now in Republicans' insistence that we get a deal on immigration reform. And if we don't, then they are going to allow Vladimir Putin to march into Ukraine and perhaps into Europe. I think this is one of the most dangerous moments that I've ever faced in American politics. And I wish Republicans weren't holding Israel aid and aid to Ukraine hostage to the resolution of immigration reform. That being said, we are still in the room trying to deal with Republicans de with Republican demands. Um, we are not going to put Donald Trump's immigration policies into statute. We're not going to do that. That would be bad for the country. Uh, but we do need to do something to try to resolve uh, this crisis at the border. We have too many people crossing, too many people that don't have valid asylum claims. And if Republicans are serious about trying to um, control that crisis while also still allowing into the country people who are legitimately fleeing terror and torture and violence, then we can come to a resolution. I want to delve into some of the details with you, but give us a gut check. How close are you to a deal? Is this going to get done before the new year, Senator? Uh, I mean, right now, Republican demands are unreasonable. They don't actually get Democratic votes. Uh, if I were a cynic, I would say that Republicans have decided to tie support for Ukraine to immigration reform because they want Ukraine aid to fail. But I'm not a cynic. And so um, we are still trying to resolve some pretty big differences that remain. You don't sound very optimistic that this is going to get done with the handful of days that you have left. Uh, we are coming up uh, against the end of the year, and of course, this is a crisis moment for Ukraine. Um, uh, Ukraine is running out of ammunition, and if we don't solve this in the next few weeks, Vladimir Putin is going to have an opening, an opening to march through the Ukrainian lines to make a move on Kyiv, threatening all of Europe. So this has to be resolved right now, which is why Republicans have to be reasonable. We are not going to solve the entire problem of immigration between now and the end of the year, but we can make a down payment. We know that based on our reporting, the White House is going to get more engaged. Should the president himself get involved in these negotiations this week? I, I, I think the White House is going to get more engaged this week. Of course, when you're talking about something as complicated as border security, you need the White House engaged mm -hmm. because you need to know whether they're going to sign the bill and you need to understand how the changes you're making are going to be implemented at the border. So they are and they will get more engaged. Let's talk about some of the sticking points. I know you're not going to negotiate with me here, but if you could give me a sense of where potential common ground could be. We know that Republicans are asking to toughen the asylum criteria. We know that they want new restrictions on the use of parole. Are those potential areas of compromise for Democrats? I think the bottom line for Democrats and the bottom line for my constituents um, is pretty simple. Um, we don't want to shut off the United States of America to people who are coming here to be rescued from dangerous, miserable circumstances in which their life is in jeopardy. That's the, the best of America is that you can come here to be rescued from terror and torture. Um, so we are not going to support anything that shuts down the border completely to people who are legitimately coming here to have their lives rescued. But we are willing to talk about tightening some of the rules so that you don't have 10,000 people arriving a day. We, our resources are not equipped to be able to handle that number of people. So let's reduce the number of people who are coming here, but let's not shut down the water completely to legitimate claims. Well, and Republicans would argue, many of them, they're not calling to completely shut down the border. But as you say, to make it tougher to get through, if you look at the poll numbers. The latest Wall Street Journal poll shows a whopping 64 percent of people disapprove of President Biden's handling of the border. Does that add pressure on you, on Democrats, to get something done here? Well, listen, not, I'm not paying attention to the politics here. What I know is that the future of the world is at stake. If we fail, if Republicans don't get reasonable in the next 24 to 48 hours, um, Russia is going to march into Ukraine. China is going to be given a green light to invade Taiwan. The world for my children is fundamentally different under that scenario. The United States security is at risk. So I am just beside myself that Republicans are playing games 
with the security of the world. I will try to meet them where they are, but this is a very dangerous uh, point. I want to ask you about Ukraine aid. You are giving these dire warnings here. We have consistently heard you say that. Can an extra $60 billion in aid change the outcome of this war, or will it just allow Ukraine to continue with the status quo? It can change the outcome of this war, because at the very same time that we are making a renewed commitment to Ukraine, Russia's ability to continue to fight this war is in jeopardy. You look at the um, revenues from oil sales, the projections for the next year, um, Russia is going to have a hard time coming up with the resources necessary to keep this fight going. In the end, will there likely have to be a negotiated solution? Absolutely. But um, if we cut off Ukraine now, the outcome is certain. The outcome is certain. Ukraine loses this war. Maybe n not next month, um, but sometime next year, because Europe will not stick with us if the United States aban abandons Ukraine. This is a decision moment for Ukraine, for the United States, and the world. I do want to ask you about some of the other headlines this week. Hunter Biden has been indicted again on tax charges. Do you think the Hunter Biden prosecution is political as his lawyer has contended or do you think that it's legally justified? I think it's legally justified. I think this is a very troubled individual who has uh, who, who has uh, done things that are worthy of prosecution and so I look forward to that case continuing. I think ultimately the American people understand that Hunter Biden is not going to be on the ballot next uh, fall, that Joe Biden is going to be on the ballot and that this is a president who has led an economic recovery recovery that has been pretty unprecedented. That's, I think, going to be what matters to the American people. Senator Mitt Romney was here and he expressed outrage over the broader issue of Hunter Biden profiting off of his last name. Do you think, Senator, that it is inappropriate for a politician's family member to profit off of their last name? I do, um, in any case. Uh, and frankly, when I look at the, the Trump family, it, it seems that they have made an industry uh, out of profiting off of Donald Trump's presidency. In fact, as soon as Donald Trump was out of the White House, what did his son-in-law do? Go and raise billions of dollars from Saudi Arabia. Um, and so I, I think the American public are, are going to be very concerned about what has happened inside the Trump family since Donald Trump but left the White House. Senator, respectfully, I asked you about the Biden family. Hunter Biden, do you think it's inappropriate that he has apparently profited off his, his last name? And could that hurt the president's reelection chances? I, I think Hunter Biden is going to be held accountable in court for any violations of the law that he's committed. And the American public are going to get the chance to watch that play out in real time. But what I'm absolutely certain of is that the American public are going to see a distinct contrast between Joe Biden and Donald Trump and are not going to be interested in a Trump presidency that's going to criminalize abortion, that's going to give more handouts to billionaires and the wealthy. Uh, they're going to see uh, President Biden, who has invested in the middle class, who has helped this economy recover. That will be the contrast that will matter to the American people. Senator Chris Murphy, thank you so much. Thanks for being here in person. Thank you. Really appreciate it.